Psycho-Cybernetics, written by Maxwell Maltz. Chapter 1. Your Self-Image. Your Key to a Better Life. Scars that bring pride instead of shame. Still another, another clue in search of the elusive self-image was the fact that not all scars or disfigurements bring shame or humiliation. When I was a young medical student in Germany, I saw many another student proudly wearing his saber scar, much as an American might wear the Medal of Honor. The duelists were the elite of college society, and a facial scar was the badge that you proved that proved you a member in good standing. To these boys, the acquisition of a horrible scar on the cheek had the same psychological effect as the eradication of the scar from the cheek of a salesman, salesman patient. In old New Orleans, a Creole wore an eye patch in much the same way. It began to see that a knife in itself had no magical powers. It could be used on one person to inflict a scar, and on another to erase a scar the same psychological results. The Mystery of Imaginary Ugliness To a person handicapped by a genuine congenital defect or suffering from an actual facial disfigurement as a result of an accident, plastic surgery can indeed, can indeed seemingly perform magic. From such cases, it would be easy to theorize that the cure-all for all neuroses, unhappiness, failure, fear, anxiety, and a lack of self-confidence would be wholesale plastic surgery to remove all bodily defects. However, according to this theory, persons with normal or acceptable faces should be singularly free from all psychological handicaps. They should be cheerful, happy, self-confident, free from anxiety and worry. We know only too well that this is not true. Nor can a theory explain the people who visit the office of a plastic surgeon and demand a facelift to cure a purely imaginary ugliness. There are the 35 or 45 year old women who are convinced they look old even though their appearance is perfectly normal and in many cases unusually attractive. There are the young girls who are convinced that they are, mere, they are ugly merely because their nose, their mouth, nose, or bust measurement does not exactly match that of the currently reigning movie queen. There are men who believe that their ears are too big, or their nose is too long. No ethical plastic surgeon would even consider operating upon these people. But unfortunately, the quacks, or so-called beauty doctors, whom no medical association will admit to membership, have no such qualms. Such imaginary ugliness is not at all uncommon. A recent survey of college co-eds showed that 90% of all, 90% were dissatisfied in some way with their appearance. If the word normal or average means anything at all, it is obvious that 90% of our population cannot be abnormal or different or defective in appearance. Yet similar surveys have shown that approximately the same percentage of our general population find some reason to be ashamed of their body image. These people react just as if they suffered an actual disfigurement. They feel the same shame. They develop uh, the same fears and anxieties. Their capacities to really live life fully is blocked and choked by the same sort of psychological roadblocks. Their scars, though mental and emotional rather than physical, are just as debilitating. 